Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys? Welcome to ISS. Okay, I'm Nicholas, and today I'm going to bring you through this session, Intelligent Robot, especially in the spectrums of live, work, and play. So a little bit more about myself. You can call me Nick for short, all right? I'm currently a lecturer at ISS, and I cover courses that include robotics-related courses. So if you are interested in robotics course, you can come and find me by this email. Please feel free to email me. I'm at your service. Okay, so today I'm going to go through right, a quick introduction what is intelligent robots, followed by certain applications. And of course, uh, this session will end off with a highlight, which is the virtual demonstrations on the autonomous robots. Okay, so intelligent robot. Is the intelligent word here redundant? Okay, so I think many of you have been thinking, why do I need to put the intelligent in front of the robot? Okay, and my answer to you for this question, it is actually redundant. So actually in ISS, if you look at this chart, right, by default, robots are intelligent to us. Okay, in terms of having to use software, in terms of having to utilize artificial intelligence algorithms, and to ensure that the robot has high level of autonomy. In these aspects, we define robots by default intelligent. And of course, robots, as compared to normal machines, have sensory systems, able to perform a larger variety of tasks. And of course, of all these aspects, all together, we expect robot to require more design and development work as compared to standard machines. And robots can be classified in many ways, one of which is to classify by their locomotion. So by definition, locomotion is the ability of the robot to move around, whereas there's another category which we like to separate the mobile robots, and this category is manipulator robots. Right? So manipulator robots are like your robotic arm. They cannot move around and they are fixed at one location. And you can call them manipulators, right? So for, for robots that are mobile, they can be divided into different categories such as robots that move on wheels, robots that move on legs, okay? And even have robots on air, such as your drones. Of course, robots can be classified by the level of autonomy, ranging from the least autonomous kind of robot that are non-programmable to the most autonomous kind of robot that are the most intelligent forms that you can find around in this world. Okay, so zooming in into just autonomous driving, right? Your self-driving cars that you heard about, right? Obviously, I think most of us have not seen in the self-driving car. Not to worry, I have an example later on in the video to show you, to drive you through this experience. Okay, but first of all, just bear with me, right? So for autonomous car, we can divide them into different levels of autonomy. So if you see from this chart, the most, right, the least autonomous, of course, is your manual driving, which is level zero, and ranging to your most autonomous, right, which is your level five, which have very minimal, minimal human intervention. So let me run you through some current interesting applications. You may have or may not have come across all these applications before, right? So at our very home, Right, where we live, we have our own very Changi Airport cleaning robot. And of course, at the houses, some of us will have this uh, Xiaomi Mi robot, which I'll explain more in detail later on. And of course, if you have the chance to go to One North, right, you get to see right, this company called Neonotomy having their self-driving cars being driving around. Okay, and of course, in the work spectrum, right, if you happen to go down to Hotel Gen, you're able to see there's two service robots, Geno and Jenna. And of course, in industry, where factories and, and warehouse, right, you'll see a lot of manipulator robots. This is very common. And of course, in the play spectrum, right, you have robots such as to play chess with you, right, as well as robots that are able to play soccer. And of course, robot that is able to replace right, your pet at home, such as dogs. Okay, let me run through some uh, illustrative examples. So first of all, our very Changi Airport cleaning robot, as you can see from the screen here. 
All right, so if you have a chance, of course, I know now it's inconvenient, but in future, let's hope in future, when we get to travel again, please do try to take note of all these robots running around, okay, and they are very autonomous, okay, they are very autonomous and you can actually test them, which I have uh, done so. Okay, you can try to go in front of them and they will try to avoid you, okay, they'll try to avoid you. Okay, you can try that in future, let's hope we'll get to travel soon. Of course, the second robot which I think most of us have come across or at least heard about, right? Uh, actually, I have two friends have this robot, the Xiaomi Mi robot, right? And according to them, okay, according to them, this Xiaomi Mi robot is very good. Okay, why so? Right? It's able to move autonomously, okay? There's very minimum cleaning, okay? And it goes back to the charging station by itself. And if you see from the right side of the screen, you're able to see that the, this robot is able to build a map of your house, right? And it's able to produce very efficient cleaning algorithms, right? To make sure every corner of your house is well clean. And the last part of the life spectrum, right? We have the self-driving cars, though not at the ideal stage yet, okay? But they're autonomous enough, okay? They're autonomous enough. I believe most of us here have not, right? Sit in a self-driving car. So right now, let me give you this driving experience. Can I have the video to play, play please? Driving by itself. <laughs> There's no driver, Daddy. See? That is nuts. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's like there's home. a ghost, a ghost at the steering wheel. I kind of feel like royalty being paraded around in this thing. Look at these guys. Look it over. Are they? <laughs> no driver. No! What? This way more thing is cruising. <laughs> oh, it's a pretty sharp turn. They made it pretty smoothly. Thank you. Do I say thank you? We're here. We made it. And I didn't have to drive. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so just a little bit more information there for people who do not know what is Waymo. Okay, Waymo is originally called Google Self-Driving Car. Okay, and for some reason, they decided to brand it. Google decided to rebrand right, their self-driving car business into a new brand called Waymo. Okay, hence the name Waymo. Okay, so to start off with the work spectrum. Under the work spectrum, if you have the chance Right, to, do, for, to go for staycation at Hotel Jen, right, please do take note of these two robots, okay, Jenna and Jenna. So what they do, the purpose of these two robots is to deliver, for example, food right, door to door to the customer hotel room. Okay, so I have ever experienced firsthand, though I have not ordered room service, okay, but I have experienced firsthand and I see the robot delivering door to door to some hotel guests. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay, for the next part of the work spectrum, right, I'll say this is very common. Okay, this is very common within factories. This is very common within the warehouses. Okay, if you see manipulators like this around helping with the heavy load. Okay, but of course, one disadvantage is, is at a fixed location. It's not able to move around. Okay, but of course, it does help a lot. Right, it does help a lot in the manual work. Okay, of course, the last part of the work spectrum. Okay, we have this thing called the humanoid nano robot, which is actually of a multi-purpose use. Right? But of course, one of the popular use of this robot is to program this robot to teach children right, on, for example, how to write on topics like physics and mathematics. So for the last spectrum, we have the play example. Okay, so there are robots that we're able to play chess with you. And of course, more interestingly, there are robots right, that form into soccer teams right, competing with each other. Okay, so this example of a, a, a event, an event organized in Sydney, Australia. Okay, so they invited people from all over the world to bring their robots, their team of robots, to play soccer okay, and to win the championship, of course. Okay, so this competition is known as the Robot Cup. Competition. 
So just give you a run through how it looks like. Can I have the video to be played, please? Thank you. Okay, so for the next part, okay, if you're interested in to see to seeing the robot cup competition, you can actually search on YouTube, right? You can just type a uh, robot cup competition. There are some examples down there. Okay, not to worry, uh, this is can be easily found online. Don't worry about that. Okay, so next up, okay, we have the Ivo robot dog by Sony. All right, so looking for on screen, okay, everybody see it looks like a real dog. Okay, but how does it move like? Okay, so if you actually get the chance to look at the advertisement by Sony, right, you get to see that this particular robot dog move right, exactly like the real dog. Okay, move exactly uh, by, like the real dog. Right, but if you ask me, it's always debatable. Does it feel like the real dog? Right, I think it's right, up to your personal choice. Okay, but of course, some people prefer the robot dog. Okay, some people prefer the robot dog due to certain reasons. All right, but just bear this in mind. Okay, currently we have robot dogs that is able to closely replicate the movements of the real dog. Okay, so for in the next section, okay, I'd like to share with you some futuristic applications that we can apply in robot in the future. Of course, I'm not talking about those we are seeing in the movie, right? Be it your Age of Ultron, be it your Terminator or iRobot. Okay, I'll, I can assure you. Right, all these robots right, will not happen in our lifetime. Okay? But what I'm going to go through with you today right, are applications that may, right, most probably, will happen within our lifetime. Okay? So some of these applications in the leaf work and play spectrum, right, under the leaf, okay, I'm going to go through an example of self-driving cars of the highest autonomous level, okay, which is the level 5, right, which is the level 5. And next, in the work spectrum, I'm going to go through with you, in particular, the laborer example, right, which is able to help us do very heavy workload manual jobs. And last but not least, we have the play spectrum, right, which I'm going to go through one interesting part, okay, which right, not has been implemented yet, okay, but there are, talks of, uh, there are talks of implementing this concept, which is the robot wrestling. So first up, right, the first example under the leaf spectrum, we have the level 5 self-driving car. So while watching this video, okay, while watching this video, please take note and try to observe what is the difference between this car okay, and the way more example. Of course, this is not a real car. Right? This is actually adapted from a TV series called Black Mirror. Okay, but please take note, this is the ideal state that we would like to achieve eventually. Okay, and try to observe the differences between this and the way more example. So can I have the video to be played, please? Are you Batman? Let's go. can take it here. It's a safe house for terrorist informers, usually. Rasmus? Yeah. I just picked up an attempted breach. Okay, right. Rasmus got a track on them? Not yet. I think there's actually two main differences. Okay, of course there are many differences. I'm going to point out two main differences that this car has, right, as compared to the Waymo example. 
I think the most obvious one is if you actually look inside the car, right, you'll find there's no driver seats at all. Okay, so all the passenger seats are actually facing each other, right, and there's no driver seat. That is the main difference. Of course, another difference, which is not so obvious, is that right, if you look at the beginning, right, the guy actually, all he needs to do is to put in the input of the location that he wants to go. Right? Other than that, he does not need to do anything. That is what I mean by high autonomy level with very minimum, minimum human intervention. That is the level 5 self-driving car for you. Okay, so for the work spectrum, one example is to use robots to help us do, to carry heavy loads. Okay, so this example that right, Boston Dynamics actually achieved this to enable a robot to carry heavy loads. This is actually amazing enough. Right? For those who have some knowledge in robotics, you'll realize this is the main problem among most developers, able to allow the robot to adapt right, when they are exposed to heavy loads. Okay, but right, right now, Boston Dynamics has been able to crack that problem. Okay, and you see the example is one of the robots that is created by Boston Dynamics. I believe in the future, okay, when technology gets more advanced, this will be more available. Right? This will be more available and we'll get to see robots helping us with the manual carrying of the loads. Okay, of course, the last example, though, has not been implemented, as I mentioned. Okay, but there's a lot of talks of implementing this, right, which is known as the robot resting under the play spectrum. Okay, if you're interested, you can take a look at this movie. Right, you can watch this movie real still under Hugh Jackman. Okay, uh, it's around two hours kind of movie. Right, I'll say it's a pretty good movie. You may want to consider watching it and you have a good grasp. Right, what do I mean by robot resting? Okay, so the next section, let me just share with you some of the state-of-the-art technologies which are essential within intelligent robots. So for the first one, Okay, LIDAR, right, I hope uh, you guys have heard of this at least once in your life. Okay, if not, I'm here to educate you, it's fine. Okay, so there's this thing called LIDAR sensor. LIDAR actually means light detection and ranging. Okay, so the very basic mechanism of LIDAR, or, ra or rather how LIDAR works. Okay, so LIDAR is a sensor that keeps spinning around. Okay, that keeps spinning around and while it spins, right, it will shoot out laser beam, right, for the purpose of Okay, for the purpose of detecting obstacles, that's one. And number two, to measure the difference, the distance, to measure the distance between the obstacle and the sensor itself. That is the purpose of the LIDAR sensor. Okay, but of course, not every company is in favor of LIDAR, right, because of its cost and other uh, reasons. Right, so Tesla is one company that does not like to use LIDAR. Right, so what does it do for a self-driving car? It focuses a lot on machine vision technology. Okay, so it managed to create some algorithms to specially allow the self-driving car to drive in adverse weather conditions as well as at night, right, in the dark where camera right, is where the general camera is of no use. Okay, Tesla is able to crack that case, right, crack that problem. It's able to create an algorithm to solve this problem. And of course, another interesting application, right? One of the state of the art technology is this thing called the brain controlled robots. Right? So the very gist of this idea is to just use your brain and nothing else, right? No code, uh, no typing of codes or no typing of commands, just using your brain and control the robot movements. Okay, so this is the main gist of this idea. Very interesting as has been illustrated by MIT. And of course, the last state of the art technology which I would like to share with you right, is this thing called ROS. Okay, ROS means Robot Operating System. Okay, according to many media, right, ROS has the potential to become an industry standard, right, especially in Singapore context. So I think most of you have been wondering, what is ROS? Okay, what is ROS? Uh, is ROS an operating system itself? The answer is, right, it's not like your normal operating system. Okay, 
meaning it's not like your Windows, it's not like your, your Linux, it's not like your iOS. Okay, in fact, it actually runs on all these operating system. And it, it is created like, based on the idea, okay, based on idea that the creators feel that we should not reinvent the wheel. Okay, we should not reinvent the wheel. Hence, if we have a system such as ROS, right, that is able to integrate algorithms of software or from different platforms all together in one, right, we have an agent to do that to allow that integration seamlessly, okay? So ROS, right, fulfills that purpose. ROS fulfills that purpose. Okay, for the next section, right, we'd like to showcase some of the robots, right, that is ROS-based. Now, of course, all these robots we have at ISS, right, if you happen and if you're interested to practice, right, you'll be exposed to these robots. Now, of course, the first one will be the TurtleBot 3. Okay, there are many variations at the beginning. Of course, currently uh, it's being downsized to two variations. So right now, TurtleBot 3, there's the burger as well as the wafer pie. Okay, but today I'm just going to go through a little bit more details just on the wafer pie, which is what we have at ISS. Okay, so in short, what is the TurtleBot 3? Right, so it is a ROS standard platform robot. It is small, affordable, and programmable, and its core technology, the main technology for, for this uh, TurtleBot 3 is SLAM. Okay, so SLAM means simultaneous localization and mapping. Okay, so the purpose of SLAM is to use, for example, the use of the LIDAR sensor, okay, and to build a map. Okay, the main aim is to build a map of the surrounding, right, be it in real time or to build it, right, for fixed Right, for a fixed period of time. Okay, and why we want to do the mapping? Right, so that we can use it for other purposes such as navigation. And last but not least, right, the TurboBot 3 has the ability to be configured right, into a high autonomous robot. That is the strength of the TurboBot 3. Okay, so this is how, right, what we have, the TurboBot 3 wafer pie. Right, what Sensors is being, uh, I mean, what is obvious on top of this wafer pie? Of course, we have the LIDAR, which is on top in the center of the TurtleBot tree. Okay, and so we have the Raspberry Pi camera, right, which is in front of the TurtleBot tree. And the other two main components, right, are the controller, which is the OpenCR, which helps to control the motors. And of course, last but not least, we have a computer within the TurtleBot tree itself, which in this case, we use the Raspberry Pi. So the next robot, right, which is the Open Manipulator, this is also ROS enabled, and it is compatible with the TurtleBot 3. Most importantly, this is important because right, it's able to integrate with the TurtleBot 3. In that sense, we are able to do, right, after the integration, it will appear like this. Okay, it will appear like this, but bear in mind, when you combine these two systems itself, okay, it's not that simple. Okay, individually, okay, individually, the TurtleBot 3 and the Open Manipulator, they are complex systems by itself already. So if you were to combine it like this, okay, it's not a plug and play kind of concept. Okay, it requires a modification. It requires a bit of uh, debugging right, to solve the conflicts between these two systems. Okay, so the integration process, though, is possible with ROS, right? It's not simple. Bear that in mind, please. Okay, so to end of the session, I have right, a demonstration for you. Of course, before going on to the virtual demonstration, right, we have videos right, that's recorded to show you on the physical robots, right? To show you on the physical robots. Okay, so there are two recorded videos for you. Firstly, is the physical demo for the TurtleBot 3. Second is for the Open Manipulator. So can I have the first video to be played, please?
Okay, so that is the physical demonstration of the turtle board tree. Next up, we have the physical demonstration of the open manipulator, which is the robotic arm. Okay, which is the robotic arm. So can I have the second video to be played, please? for the physical demo okay right now okay i'm going to go through the virtual demonstration let me explain the previous uh, demonstration that i'm going to go through with you okay so first up right i'm going to show an example of how i'm going to use the turtle board tree to perform slam okay slam remember is simultaneous localization and mapping okay don't forget that huh? that is slam for you i'm going to use turtle board tree to perform slam okay and while it's performing STEM, I will activate another program, okay, another node. Okay, so node, when I say node, means program. Huh? I'll, I'll activate another node to allow the TurtleBot tree to autonomously explore the whole area. Okay, and while it's exploring the whole area, it will capture the map data. And while it's doing that, it will create the map. Okay, that is the first demonstration. The second demonstration, right, we'll be using this map that I've created, okay, and I will use the turbot tree to navigate through this map using an application, right, using an application. And of course, the last demonstration that I'm going to go through, right, I have this uh, dark world, right, of course it's a virtual world, right, I have this dark world that replicates the scenario at night, okay, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the turbot tree well, without the use of the camera, okay, without the use of the camera, I'm going to use the turbot tree to navigate through a maze in this very dark world. Okay, so right now, I, I will need to switch the platform. Okay, please hang on a while. Thank you. Okay, so if you look at the screen, I'm currently in this uh, platform. Right, right now, I'm using Ubuntu. Okay, I'm using Ubuntu to run the system, right, to run the raw system. Okay, so first up, right, there are several steps for the first demo. As I mentioned, I'm going to use Slam. Okay, I'm going to ask the turtle bot to do the slam, followed by right, autonomous exploring around the virtual world. Okay, so for the first step, I have to launch the turtle bot tree into this virtual world called turtle bot tree world. Right? This is not a real world, right? this is actually a, a simulated world created by the creators of turtle bot tree. Okay, so when it's loaded, oops, uh, sorry, a bit of technical error there, bear with me a while. Okay, so after I launch this world, okay, after I launch this world, I will launch the slam node. Okay, so you will see on this terminal, okay, I'll launch the slam node with these commands, okay, followed by the autonomous exploring, right, which is in this terminal. Okay, okay, so let me try to launch the, the turtle board tree into the virtual world again. Okay, so uh, when, right, when the TurtleBot 3 robot is launched in the virtual world, right, initially you will see something like this. Okay, this is the whole virtual world. Okay, this is the whole virtual world. The robot is the one at the bottom. Okay, so let me zoom in to that you have a better view. Okay, so if you look at the bottom, when I zoom in to the bottom, okay, you will see the TurtleBot 3 being placed there. Okay, this is what I mean by loading the turtle bot tree into the virtual world, into the virtual world. 
Okay, so that is my step one. Of course, the second step I like to do is to launch the slam node. Okay, is to launch the slam node. Okay, so right now I'm going to launch the slam node and application will come out. Okay, which will show the mapping process. Okay, which will show the mapping process. Okay, so when I launch the slam node, okay, this RVITS application will come out, right? And you see, right, the slam process is, has been initialized. Okay, has it been completed? No. Okay, it's not has been completed. You need to get this starter board to explore around the map, okay, to explore around the map to get more data off the map. Only then, right, only then you complete the slam process. Okay, at this stage, it's not completed. So there are two ways of doing it. Number one, okay, number one, you can use the turtle board to manually control it to move around to collect the map data. Or number two, which is I'm going to show you right now. Okay, number two, you can get this turtle board to autonomously explore around the map. Okay, to explore around the map, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so I'm going to run the program that's going to do that. And you can see that the turtle board will move like right, randomly around just to explore the whole map. Okay. And of course, at the same time to avoid collusion, right? At the same time to avoid collusion. Okay, that is very important, especially for self-driving car. All right, of course, I'll not show this uh, process fully, okay, because it will take a while. Okay, it will take a while. So if you look at this example as it moves around, right, more map data has been collected. And while doing that, right, it gradually built the map. Okay, it gradually built the map. That is the thing, right? That is the thing that we want at the end of the day. Okay, of course, uh, as I say, I'll not go through this in full. So at the end of the day, when you build the map, you can actually save it. Okay, you can actually save it into a picture file. Okay, you can save it in the picture file like this. Okay, and the purpose of saving is into a file Right, into a picture file like this, okay, is to enable us to perform navigation, for example, right, which is the second part of the demonstration that I'm going to show to you. Okay, so when you build finish the map, you can save it like this, and then only then right, you can perform your navigation efficiently. Okay, so let me prepare for the second demonstration. Okay, so right now I'm going to close all the nodes first. Okay, then I'm going to show you the second demonstration. So let me close this and uh, open the second demonstration for you. Okay, so same thing. Okay, same thing. I have to launch this the Turtlebot tree into the virtual world again. And of course, the second step, right, I'll launch the navigation node, right, which will allow me to move the Turtlebot tree, to navigate the Turtlebot tree to the position that I want it to move to. Okay, so this is the first step, right, the same as the, the demonstration one that I showed you just now. Okay, and of course, uh, secondly, I'll have to launch the navigation node, which enables me to do the autonomous navigation. Okay, so give it some time to run. And then same thing, uh, RVIT's program, right, RVIT's application will appear, right, but this time around, I'm using it for navigation. Right, instead of slam, okay? So just bear in mind, it's using the same application, but for different purpose. All right, so let me just remove some of the unwanted things on screen. Okay, so if you look at the screen on hand, right, if you look at the screen on hand, okay, you're able to see the, the, the map that I've created, right, with the turtle board here. Okay, there are two steps when, if I want to, yeah, I, there's two steps that I need to do. Okay, if I want to autonomously navigate the turtle board tree to the position I want. Okay, so if looking at this, obviously the turtle board tree is not in the center, right? If you were to refer to this right, virtual world, right? The turtle board tree is somewhere on the bottom right. 
So the first step I need to do, I need to calibrate. Okay, I need to tell the computer where is the initial position of the turtle board tree. Okay, so first of all, I need to calibrate the initial position, right? Which I click here, the post estimate. Okay, I need to calibrate. Okay, so let's say the position of the turtle board tree is around here. Okay, I need to calibrate it at first. Okay, but the question now is, okay, is this autonomous? No. Okay, so it's not autonomous because I need to do this manually. So of course, can this be done autonomously? The answer is yes. Okay, so the answer is yes. Okay, how so? I have, I can create a program. Okay, I can create a program to do this action autonomously. Okay, so how so? I give you an example. So let's say if the post estimate is off. Okay, so let's say it's off right now. Right, obviously the robot, as I mentioned, is not somewhere in the center, right? It's somewhere at the bottom right. Okay, and if I run the program that I've created, okay, if I run the program, okay, let me put this to the left so that you can see it. Okay, so if I run the program, I'm able to do this uh, autonomously. I'm able to do this autonomously. Okay, so take note of the screen. Okay, it will automatically calibrate itself. Okay, I do not need to do that manually. Okay, I do not need to do that manually. Right? Okay, so give it some time and it will automatically calibrate itself. Okay, so if you look at the screen, you see it automatically calibrate. The computer did that for me, right? Just of a click of command in the terminal. Okay, so that is how I can do this autonomously without me right, doing the post estimate manually. Okay, so for the next example, for the autonomous navigation, I can set this navigation goal, right, which I can set the desired position as well as the desired orientation that I want the robot to end up with, end up on. Okay, so for example, if I set this as the final position, I want the robot to face right, the direction according to the arrow. I can do that. Okay, so for example, I do that and the robot will start moving towards the Final destination. Okay, but bear in mind along the way, if let's say there's obstacles, if let's say there's obstacle running through, okay, the robot will recalculate its path and avoid the obstacle. Okay, so for example, if let's, let's say there's an obstacle here, the robot, for example, may go one round around at the right side to reach its final destination. Okay, so bear that in mind, this is not just plainly a path point to point driving. Okay, there's some intelligence in it. Okay, yet again, the question is, right, for me to manually put this navigation goal, is it autonomous enough? The answer, of course, is no. Okay, so anything I need to key in manually, okay, it's not autonomous enough. It does not have a high level of autonomy, and I want to eliminate all this manual work. So that is the main purpose of an autonomous system. You want to minimize the amount of human work in the process. Okay. So with this, I can show you an example, which is the third example, which I'm going to navigate the turtle board tree through the dark. And not only that, while in that process, I will, right, I will automate these two steps. Okay, number one, I'll automate the calibration of the post estimate. And number two, I'll automate the setting of the navigation goal. Okay, so that I will show it on the next demonstration. Demonstration number three. Okay, so first of all, uh, give me some time. I'll, I will close these programs first. Okay, and I'll launch it into another world, right, which I name it as the dark world. Okay, so this dark world that I'm going to show you right now is no other, it's no different from right, the world that is at night. Okay, it's trying to replicate that. Okay, it's trying to replicate that. Of course, this is in a virtual form. Okay, so right now, for this demonstration, I'm going to do two steps only. Of course, the first one in the real world is not necessary, but just that when it comes to uh, simulations, when it comes to simulations, this step is necessary to put my turtlebot tree into the virtual world. Okay, so in the physical setting, I don't have to do that. Okay, in the physical setting, I don't have to do that. All right, so when I launch it in the virtual world, I'm sorry for those uh, which I said is not so good. Just understand this is very dark. Okay, don't worry, doing the, the process, I will not show you this. Okay, it will be in a better format. 
Okay, just understand the turtle board tree. Okay, you cannot see, it's fine. I'll explain to you. The board tree is somewhere in the bottom left. Okay. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make it go through this maze. Okay, I'm going to make, make it go through this maze and reach the final point at the top right. Okay, I'm going to go, let the turtle board go through this maze. Okay, and go to the top right, which is the final destination I want it to go. Okay, so if you actually take a look at the first view, Okay, yet again, I apologize uh, for those who, who are not able to see. Okay, it's just for illustration purpose that uh, to show you that it is very dark. Okay, it is very dark. Right? But yet, even though it's dark, I'm still able to navigate the turtle board tree through this maze. Okay, so if you look at the first person view of the turtle board tree by its camera, okay, you understand the camera of the turtle board tree is useless at this point. Meaning, be it for normal machine vision algorithms, okay, you will not be able to see anything. Right? That is the weakness of using a camera to navigate the turtle board, right? to navigate the self-driving car also. That is one of the weakness of using a camera. It's not able to see properly in the dark. But of course, there's a lot of debates uh, that Tesla is able to do it, but that's not going to be there. That's one of the few rare companies that's able to crack that case. Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the example that I'm going to move this turtle board tree, okay, from point to point, right, to the final destination, and through the maze, right? So right now, you have a clear view when I launch these uh, commands. Okay, so only one type, one set of command in this terminal, everything will be done by itself. That's what I mean by autonomous driving, which very minimum human intervention. Okay, so the rest will be done by itself. Okay, of course, I will clear off some uh, illustration for better view. Okay, so everything, if you look at the right of the screen, everything is done automatically. Okay, everything is done automatically, right? Okay, so you will see, you captured that just now. The initialization has been done autonomously, and it started moving by itself by autonomously as well. Okay, the thing is, right, I'll not show you this true, throughout when you reach the end, okay? I just want to make a point that, uh, uh, I want to make some points over here, which is some things, for example, even though it's dark, okay, this turbo tree is still able to navigate its way, okay? And why is this so? It's because of the help of the leader. Leader works very well at night, and it's able to complement, right, the weakness of the camera, right? It's able to complement the weakness of other sensors such as the camera. That is the beauty of the leader. Of course, uh, as I mentioned just now, Tesla has another way of doing it, which is fine as well. Okay, but of course, the currently the standard industry standard is to use leader, right? Which is a very powerful tool for self-driving cars. Okay, but again, if let's say there's obstacles moving around, okay, again, this turbo tree will actually try to avoid the obstacles. Okay, it's not just a plain point-to-point uh, -point moving, right? It is actually a dynamic setting. Okay, I hope you enjoy the, the demonstration, right? With this, I would like to end off the session. Thank you very much, and I'm ready to take questions right now. Okay, uh, okay we got some questions here. Wow. Okay, let me go through the, the shorter questions first. Huh? Okay. okay, so first of all, uh, somebody asked, can LIDAR work in the, dark, in the dark? Okay, I think I've answered that just now. Okay, so LIDAR is one of the few sensors that can work very well in the dark. Right? Apart from LIDAR, such as uh, radar and sonar, okay, sonar in, is another word for ultrasonic sensor. Okay, these three works very well in the dark. So just a little bit of uh, information on these three. Okay, why LIDAR is being branded as the most reliable, even though it's more, the most expensive out of these three, right? LIDAR is branded as the most reliable as compared to radar and sonar. Okay, why is it so? It's because LIDAR is using light, okay? It's using light as the agent, right? While radar and sonar, they are using radio waves and sound waves as the agent. Okay, so I didn't need us to say, we all know that light is much faster than these two components, right? Hence, the high reliability of the leader. Okay, so I I have other questions as well. Let me go through. Okay, 
Okay, so, uh, okay, we have a question. Let me read it out. Is it possible to teach intelligent robots ethics? Okay, I think uh, this participant is asking, is it possible to teach ethics to the intelligent robot? Okay, for instance, teaching autonomous vehicles what to do when faced with an ethical dilemma, such as a trolley problem, what is the right thing to do in a dilemma? Okay, that the answer to this is, okay, I won't say exactly teach ethics. Okay, if you ask me for someone to learn ethics, you have to be human, right? You have to be alive. Okay, in my perspective, uh, robots, they do not have ethics, but that does not mean that, right? That does not mean you cannot apply the ethics of humans into the intelligent robot. Okay, so I, I, I hope you get the distinction there. Okay, so robots, you cannot teach them ethics, but you can apply ethics from the human to the intelligent robot. Meaning through your rules and regulation that you apply to your robot, okay, you can use that to apply the ethics of humans. I hope that answers your question. Okay, so let me move on to the next question. Okay, so is the map, okay, is the map image a normal image? Okay, or does it contain special data? Okay, if I have a floor plan of the location, can I see, okay, can I just use the floor plan image? Okay, or is it still necessary to allow the robot to explore on its own? Okay, I will say the answer to that is yes, the map image is a normal image. Okay, and if you look at the example I show you, it's a PGM file. Okay, it's just a normal image file. Okay, but right, how you create this map, right? Okay, it has to be compatible with the application. In this case, it's the RVs which I showed just now. Okay, uh, whether you use your own uh, uh, the image, okay, you can also, but it has to be compatible. I repeat myself. It has to be compatible with the application, which is the RVs. So what I mean is to be safe, okay, you can use... If you want to use the RVs application to move the turbot tree or to do slam, okay, the safer way is to just use the application, retain the application instead of creating your own map. Okay. Let me see uh, the other questions. If I have a problem. Okay, so is it the second part of your question is is it necessary to allow the robot to explore and so on? Okay, the answer to that is yes. Okay, so as I mentioned, simultaneous, okay, or rather slam means simultaneous localization and mapping. Okay, it's not mapping by itself. Okay, it's not mapping by itself. Okay, so it involves what? Localization. Okay, it involves localization and mapping at the same time. Okay, at the same time in order for this to work. Okay, so it's not just building a map. Okay, it's not just building a map, but it involves localization, which means what? Telling the, the to build a map that, to tell the, the I call it the robot, Right, where is it on the map? That is localization. Okay, that is localization. So two things come to play. Number one, mapping. Okay, number two, localization, which is right, knowing where's the robot on the map. Okay, I hope you have a clear understanding of that. Okay, someone make a very good point, which I have not uh, gone through just now. Okay, so somebody make a very good point. You say LIDAR cannot work through glass wall. Okay, that I agree with you, which I have not gone through just now. Okay, that is the disadvantage of LIDAR. Okay, being anything that, any obstacles that is reflective, right, or reflective, okay, LIDAR does not work well, right? LIDAR does not work well. Very good point there. Okay, but of course, if it comes to other uh, opaque obstacles, right, LIDAR is actually very useful. That's why I emphasize on this thing called right, fusion of different kinds of sensors to complement each other weaknesses and strengths. Okay, so LIDAR by itself is useless. I will tell you that. Okay, of course, you cannot use LIDAR by itself for self-driving car. You have to use it right, with a combination of other sensors, such as radar, such as uh, cameras, right, such as ultrasonic. Okay, I'm so sorry I cannot answer all of your questions, but I thank you for your time. If you really have dying questions you want to ask me, you can always email me. Okay, so with this, I would like to end off this session. Thank you so much for your time. And goodbye, have a good day. Take care, please.